Welcome back Vault Dwellers! We are back to the wasteland with the third episode of my building series in which we are crafting a fallout mock like no other and today we're moving on with even more details that will push my part collection to the limits. In the last episode we spent quite some time on making the pickup truck and lots of wedges on covering the front base plates with the landscape and today we're finally moving to the biggest section of the mock with even more groundwork and the courtyard in front of the vault. So it's time to open up that Nuka Cola and pop that Mad X as we get immersed into the post apocalyptic world of Fallout, so let's get started right now. Ok guys, as the previous episode ended with completing the groundwork of the front two base plates almost entirely, I guess it's time to plan out how the rest of the landscape will look. As you may remember from the first episode, the plan is to have a raised courtyard in front of the vault and today we'll be focusing mostly on that. But in order to get there, we need some foundations first, so after securing 10 of the biggest plates and laying them down, I guess it's time for some regular ground raising. Everyone got their own style of doing this, but the basic principles are the same save as many parts as you can while making a solid foundation for the actual building. The first row of plates is at the same level as the front and the rest will be adjusted by using even more of those precious wedge plates, but the further we go I want the ground to be elevated slightly so it looks more natural towards the rock face. For now I'm covering it all as it goes but as we progress I will probably make some changes here when I'll be making the main attraction of today's video being the courtyard. But before we get there I wanted to test out the sidewalk in front of it which is a transition between the end of the road and the stairs that will lead up to the vault. Having it a bit wider than the road I tried making it as damaged as possible with only small pieces like ingots, dots and different tiles that are not even pressed down completely which makes it look even worse. In a good way of course. The plate I laid down in the middle is more or less where the stairs will be, but maybe before we move on to the staircase itself, let's take care of the sides and sketch the landscape first. So starting out on the left hand side, I continue with the same pattern we established before with wedges, tiles, plates and even more wedges. In the center I've sketched the foundation for the stairs just to have a basic idea on how to make the surroundings and I made a simple line of the sand that was blown here by the wind and got stuck in the corner. I think that's quite a good way to make it so let's take some demo stairs and see how well they work with the rest. Ok, as I look at them, I may remodel the width so that I can fit a railing on the side as well, but let's not worry about that now and just focus on making some more landscape. And this time I switched sides and made more or less the same amount on the right. Not much to talk about here in terms of techniques as you've already seen it all, but what I can do now with having this part done is finally disconnect the front base plate so that I can have some more space on my desk to work with. So with that out of the way, I think it's time to start the podium. As you know, I'm taking inspiration from Vault 51 from Fallout 76, mostly because of this particular part in front of the vault door. Here the shape is quite unique comparing with most of the other vaults that only have a metal scaffolding for getting to the door, but I wanted to make a sweet spot for the raider's leader and place his main headquarters here. So this is what I came up with with the bottom layer. Just some curved slopes that resemble the one from the game quite accurately and what's more I could now make the edge of the sand gathered in the corners as it should be which came out quite naturally I think, so now it's time to finish the sidewalk. Much, much, much later. I think I got carried away a bit and not only made the sidewalk, but also upgraded the stairs, move on to the platform 
and even finish the lower part of the landscape on the sides. And you know what? This looks awesome. The landscape is of course more or less the same as before, maybe using a few more tiles, but the concept still holds. So we can stop modeling the ground for now and just focus on the central part with the podium. The second layer I also made with some curved slopes, but this time in light grey, and on top of it all, a layer of dark tiles that will be the upper limit of the courtyard floor. Also, the stairs are more or less done for now, except of course for the sides left for the railings, but even without that, it's starting to look like something I've envisioned in my head. So now, we can first take care of the missing sides, for which I already have quite a decent idea. I just made this small assembly on the side, and place it on a couple of slopes freely and it fits almost perfectly. There are still some gaps visible, but this is the advantage of making a post-apocalyptic wasteland. You can always have some cracks here and there and it still doesn't break the immersion because everything here is broken. So with this done, it's time to move on with the railing, which was not at all easy to figure out because the shape from the game is not something that would translate nicely to bricks, but I came up with a quite an interesting take on this. I just used dark grey candles that will be mounted into the wall, supported by a couple of these bar studs and crossing with the stairs railing with this two-way snot brick. And that just looks so good in my opinion. At first, I wanted to maybe use some curved slopes or tiles here, but I figured they would cover too much of what is going to be placed here, and this is just the perfect height for that. So now, let's figure out how to cover the courtyard with some kind of a floor pattern. At first, when looking at the game, I wanted to use some regular 2x2 tiles for that, but that way it would be way too clean and I didn't want to use the same crack technique as on the sidewalk, so I came up with this interesting thing. I think I haven't seen a floor pattern like this before, at least not this size, and that is something I always want to explore. I did see some mocks using 2x2 blocks with the panels being freely placed below, and with the tiles being at the same level as the tip of the panels, but I wanted to have it all fixed in place with small gaps between the concrete and this pattern came out very satisfying. Of course I had some issues with the smaller spots in between the panels because as you can see not every gap is the same, but in the end I managed to fill these gaps quite good. Now there are some holes here and there, but for sure they won't be that noticeable when I make all of the blocks with smaller pieces to make them look as damaged as they should be, but that will have to wait for now because I don't have enough panels to even make the frame for the whole courtyard. But now we should see how it all looks in place, but again I need some foundations for that, so let me just quickly make some supports, cover this huge hole with plates, and move the pattern to its place. Wait, there still are some plates missing, so let me quickly fix that too. And there we go, much better. Unfortunately, we'll have to wait a bit before we see it all completed, because like I said, I don't have enough panels. But you know what? How about I'll head on to Bricklink now and try to get some of these panels, among other needed pieces of course, and maybe they'll arrive before I finish editing this video the next day and what do you know the order just came in so let's check it out shall we i just had to get 60 of these 10 quarter circle tiles since i'm all out already and it's the main piece for adding details to the groundwork here we have a bag of random pieces with the yellow supports that should be a perfect piece for the power armor station as well as of course some wedges for the ground tiles for the floor and some pieces for the pickup that I need to remake in the right colors. A third fabric that will fit perfectly to the team as well as a yellow hose I will try to incorporate to the door, some parts for the car and a couple of brackets for the floor 
as well as 1x3 panels for making the sides of the floor frame. And of course a whole bag of 1x2 panels also for the floor, which still will not be enough, but at least I have all the needed corner panels. And last but not least, a few more parts for the car and two minifigures. One a perfect candidate for joining the Raiders crew and the other one is Nightwing for my DC collection, which to be honest I wasn't adding to for quite some time so I'm very happy I got him. Ok so we have the parts ready for continuing the work, but I think we should end the progress for this episode here, just to have this video out already and we'll move on with the rest next time. Or you know what? Let's at least make use of the new figure and make another member of the gang. I just added an armor piece, a blade on the back and a welding helmet on his head, but I'm still iffy about the custom gun I've added. I had a bunch of those for years, but still haven't used them because I'm a purist when it comes to my mocks. But on the other hand, it's a perfect representation of the assault rifle from the game, so it would fit the mock perfectly, but I don't know, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section below and of course give me your thoughts on the entire progress I've made for this update, drop a like if you enjoyed this video and of course subscribe to the channel if you are new to Kubrick. I will see you all next time and until then, as always, just keep it bricking.